Number 30 said solve the inequality below to determine and then state the smallest possible value for x. Okay, so I'm going to distribute to start. I get 3x plus 9. I'm going to subtract 3x, subtract 3x. I get 9 is less than or equal to 2x minus 3. I'm going to add 3. I get 12 is less than or equal to 2x. Divide both sides by 2. I get x is greater than or equal to 6. Now, if you stop right here, you, you would lose points because it says to state. So you need to make a statement. The smallest... Possible value of x is 6. Complete sentence. We know that you understood what this means. For the residual plots, for all these x values, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, all we're doing here is plotting the residual. So therefore, if my x value is 2, my residual is 2, I'm just plotting the point. Essentially, I'm plotting 2, 2. I'm plotting 3, 1. 3, negative 1, 4, negative 2, 6, negative 3, 7, negative 2, 8, negative 1, 9, positive 2, 9, 0, 10, 3. So it looks like our residuals kind of form a parabola. So because the residuals form a pattern, kind of like a parabola, the line is not a good fit must be more scattered. This will get you full credit. Number 32 asks you to solve this by completing a square. Uh, generally, to complete the square, we're going to take one half of x's coefficient and then square it. So in this case, one half of 6 is 3, and then we're going to square 3. So that means that we're going to add 9 to both sides. State the value of c that creates a perfect squared trinomial, 9. I stated my answer. I get full credit for that part. Now it says explain how the value of C is determined. Now, I, I kind of explained it right here. So if you want to use this as your explanation, this is more than acceptable for an answer. Generally speaking, it does not say to solve. It doesn't say to come up with an answer. It just says, you know, how to, how to get the value. That's all they want to know. Number 33, they want you to graph um, basically y equals the absolute value of 3x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that in my calculator as the absolute value of 3x. Let's review how to get that. I hit second, zero, which takes me to catalog. ABS is my first choice, and then I type in 3x. I'm going to go to graph. If you notice, it's going to be a V-shaped graph. I go to table to get my table of values. Now I scroll through so that this value matches that one, this one matches that one. Um, this gives us a, an, an up and down graph. It gives us a centered graph. So now I'm going to plot all of these points. I plotted all my points, and now I am going to connect the dots with these arrows. You will lose points if your graph does not go all the way up to the edges or contain those arrows. Um, now it says if, 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 if uh, you know, basically if Y2 is the same as y1 minus 2, how is the graph translated, okay? So what you can do for yourself is you can go to your calculator, you can go to um, variables, V-A-R-S, scroll over to y vars, y variables, function, hit enter on y1 and subtract 2. Then you can go to graph and take a look, well what happened to that graph? It looked like it went down 2 units. Okay. Now, in this case, this one's going to be a little bit more difficult to enter. Basically, what this is saying is that the absolute value of 3 times x minus 4. They're replacing x with x minus 4. So we can put that in our calculator and take a look at what happens, uh, but you have to do that manually. Absolute value of 3 times x minus 4. Okay, let's take a look at what happens. Notice how my graph moved to the right, 4 units.